all I can offer is this, these few words and these few lines. I love you. And then you sign off. That is it. There's nothing more that can be added. And so we created a Facebook page that's called Hold Hands in Filipino. And it's uh, Hawak. Everybody say Hawak. Hawak. Kamai. It's Hold Hands. It's H A W A K. Hawak. Kamai. K A M A Y. Hawak Kamai. One more time. Hawak. Hawak. Kamai. Hawak Kamai. So you can find it on Facebook. And guess what? Just in a few days, there's around 1,300 members. And every one of them has created a, a poem or a few lines or a few words from 10 year olds on up. So all that has been very encouraging. So I, I'm here to invite you also to, uh, to write a poem at home or send it into Facebook or send it to me at UCR. Yay, you see Riverside. Send it to me, you see Riverside. You see Riverside, yeah. Of course, como que no. And uh, for the Philippines. And people are being very, uh, feel really good. Our, our Filipino community feels very, very happy that we are doing this. Because we're, we're used to, oh well, I'm a Chicano, you know. And, uh, you know, uh, Chicano power, okay. And uh, I got my Chicano power button, which, which, <laughs> which I've had, you know, at the same time. We can all, all of us, we can all of us, all of us, from the core of our lives, relate to everyone else in a positive, beautiful manner. So let's do that. Let's do that. Shall we do that? Yes. Shall we relate to everybody in a positive, beautiful manner? Yes. Do, do we need to do a little bit more of that every day? Yes. Is, from what we see going on around, do we need a little bit more of a positive human relationship taking place? Yes. Do we need a bit more communication in that manner? Do we need a little bit more poetic expression in that manner? Yes. Do we need less violence? Yes. Do we want to be like Gandhi? Yes. Do we want to be more peaceful? Yes. Do we want to promote nonviolence? Yes. We want to get rid of bullying? Yes. Bullying everywhere? Yes. Bullying at the burrito shop? Yes. Bullying in the schools? Yes. Elementary schools? Yes. Teenagers getting beat up and committing suicide? We want to get rid of that? Yes. Yes. We want to contribute to that? Yes. We want to find a, a, a way to do that? Well, one way to do that, we are doing it right now, is by expressing yourself with your beautiful voice, which is really you. It's only one person that has that voice, and that person is you. So you're invited to the Hawakamai Project. It's part of the Unity Project that we've been doing all year long. But whatever goes on, let's respond. Whatever is going on, let's respond. Let's respond. That's what poetry is, it's response to our inner lives and to the life, the bigger life, where our inner life is part of. Our inner life is not separate from big life. If it was, we'd be dead. Because <laughs> we couldn't eat, we couldn't speak, we couldn't breathe. We couldn't even grow. We'd still be a little baby. Because we need big life to be who we are. So let's contribute to big life and to human beings in big life all around us in all languages and cultures. I'm going to invite at this very moment and they do not know this. They're beginning to feel this. They're beginning to feel it in their bones because they're sitting down right in front of me and right in front of us. And they happen to be poets from Inlandia. They're right here in front of us. They're not behind me because, because our poets have read that are standing up here with me and they're right here. I'm looking at them right now with my beady eyes and they happen to be poetry uh, uh, poets in, in my class. Everybody say, really? really? Poets in your class? Poets in class. And they're right, they're right here? Well, well, well. well, well, well. Vamos, a ver. Vamos a ver. We're going to see what's really going on. So I'm going to call on them. Right here we have Amy. Say hi to Amy. Hi, Amy. And Amy, get ready to start getting some poems out of your purse. And everybody say hi, Vicky. And Vicky, start getting some poems out of your out of your uh, out of your uh, uh, backpack. And everybody say hi Marisa. hi, Marisa. And Marisa, start getting poems out of your blue backpack. And everybody say, 
say anyway, say hi Kate. She's over there. Say hi Kate. Hi. And Kate is just going to remember a poem for you. Everybody say hi. Derek is over there. Hi Derek. And over there we have Julianne. Say hi, Julianne. She's also an artist and a painter. And uh, and then we're passing out some paper for the wrist he uses to put some words on. So we're all going to be involved right now. Everybody say, really? Really? Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't believe it. They're passing out paper. I don't want to write anything. But it's okay, because we're going to express ourselves. There's some paper going around. Grab some paper and just scratch on it. Make an X, a zero. Uh, doesn't matter. Touch the paper. Just touch the paper. Just touch the paper. Okay, all you got to do is just touch the paper. And right now, you're going to write something fresh. you got something. Everybody write one word. All we need is one word. Una palabra, okay? One word. One word. Or just tell me the word, and they'll write it down. Just tell me the word, okay? Okay, everybody take around 15, 20 seconds. Something about unity. It could be anything like... Marissa, what's the word comes up to your mind? Come right up here so we can hear it, because I can't hear you. Thank you so much. But, but give Marissa a big hand. Marissa Thompson, and tell them a, bit, a little bit where you're coming from, and you just moved up here and all that. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Hello. It's good to be here. Um, I'm trying to remember, see, because I don't, I'm not up on my Swahili, but uh, the seven principles of Kwanzaa, one of them is unity. Um, it's very important. And another one is collective responsibility. Um, and another one is creativity. Um, so there, there are many ways that we can come at this. Um, idea of unity. So those were some of the words that I was thinking of. So, Read a little yeah. bit of poem. Read a little bit of poem. How, how, how did I become a poet? Yeah. I think I started writing about daffodils in third grade. Um, and, uh, and it kind of went from there. And then I started writing with my spelling words. I had a really encouraging teacher. And then uh, I started writing about things that uh, that kind of made me feel disrupted in the world a little bit. I would look around and I'd say, something's not right about that, so I'd write a poem about it. And, uh, and then I started writing about um, being myself. Uh, so that's, that's basically, you know, like putting myself into words because I couldn't always find the words out in the world to express who I was. So I had to start writing about it and make the words for myself. Read a little bit. Should I? I could do my. Should I do my bullying poem? So part of it. Okay. So this is the beginning of a bullying poem, um, or an anti-bullying poem. It's a bullying rap. I can't rap. I'm not even going to claim it. But you know, the, the Juan Felipe said write a rap. So I'm like, okay, here I go. All right. Fifth grade, and I got brand new shoes. They were the kind my moms had that I wanted to lose. Round gray, no brand name, not Jordans or my Adidas. My mom wore the same kinds of shoes so she could feed us, but I hated them. Felt like Frankenstein, my feet sticking out like boats while I lined up in line. Was afraid of the teasing, got my stomach all queasing. Thought everyone was looking at my clothes for no reason. From my corduroy pants to my parents' playing car, no one to tell me I was a star. You're a shining star. No matter who you are, shining bright to see who you can truly be, truly be. Sixth grade convinced my mom to get some brand new kicks. Now I'm rocking Reeboks, laces wide as Shaq's fingertips. But that feeling still haunted me, the clothes still daunting me. Had those voices in my head saying nobody wanted me. Dodging bullies like bullets around the corners in school lits. Like if there were a bully lime in the hall, well I'd pull it. They got my friend cause she's smart, that other girl cause she's fat. And all I'm hearing, watching, saying is I ain't going out like that. So played sports, hit the books, blended in with the scenery. Wouldn't bring my lunch, had to eat in the beanery. Always trying to keep up with cool kid Jones. Crazy how in a crowd you're always alone. Being boss, chasing floss instead of raising the bar. And no one to tell you you're a star. You're a shining star, no matter who you are. Shining bright to see who you can truly be, truly be. So that's it. <laughs> For Marisa Thompson. Hey, hey, hey. Now, now you get that A. 
<laughs> Very good. What did you think, folks? How, did, how was that? How was Marissa? Did you enjoy her poem? Her rap? You know, it's really good. And uh, just, just, just do the writing. Don't even think about it. You go, okay, I'm going to write a rap. Just go ahead. Do, do whatever comes up. Put it on there. And I saw that you were writing some lines over there. Yeah, I saw you some writing some lines over there. You want me to pick the paper up, or you want to come on up and read them? Want to pick it? Okay. Uh, Amy, help me. And uh, and uh, what? What's your name? Don. Don. From Riverside. I visited the antique store to, to view the things of old. I was lucky to escape before I too was sold. <laughs> A big hand for Don. Yeah? That's it. That's it. And, and did you enjoy that? Did you guys enjoy that? Did you feel something positive taking place when you heard Don's writing? That you knew that Don wrote it? How did that feel to you? How was that feeling? It was wonderful. Was it wonderful? It was wonderful. And why was it wonderful? Well, it was unexpected. It was unexpected. It was funny. It was funny. And uh, it, I don't know. I just I enjoyed it. And 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 uh, I what and, and Katie enjoyed it. So you see, Don. A lot happened, uh, we enjoyed it quite a bit, and some of it we can figure out and some of it we can't, but we kind of like the fact that it was about the antique store and that Don just came out with it, and a lot is being said in here. We don't want, how many of you want to be sold in an antique store? Anybody? No. So we're talking about change and a lot of great things in here, and about uh, being sold. We don't want to be sold, we want to be originals. You guys are original. Another big hand for Don. I see we have the traveling Inlandia eye that finds a poem in the group. Everybody get ready to ha ha hoo hoo. Here she is. Everybody, a hand for Julianne. Hi. Hi. Actually, I wrote this poem for a class, um, but it really uh, it took a lot to write it. Um, it was a very it was a very um, intense response for me to uh, my grandfather. Okay. His face wrinkles and he shows me the stark white fields of his smile, causing my chest to ache and my eyes to burn in the dimness of the area as I try to ignore my mother standing by the door, already ready to whisk me away from Georgia. Holding his arms out to his sides, I recall how they tremble. He asked me, give me some sugar. From where I sit, swallowed by the burgundy recliner, its partner overstuffed by the girth of my grandfather, I look to him and his waves of pepper black hair, thickness repressed with the great grease that is coconut oil, his hair that rests over his dark chocolate face and high cheeks, cheekbones, a wisp of a jet mustache dusted across his top lip, and his abysmally black eyes were watery and bright from the eye drops he'd baptized his sight with. Eternity opens with the dark back of a jazz pianist hunched inside himself. Girl with your chipped tooth, distressed shoes, dark hair that remind me of Florence. I speak cotton soft to a broken heart, now a vegetable for the dead. So I make my move, espionage behind champagne flutes and clink of cocktail glasses in bathrooms. I know couples moan, touch each other, deja vu trapped within tiled walls. Girl, telepathy's a dirty habit. After all, night is the come what may we all want to be. Nighttime is kissing, shagging to dirty movies that flicker like starlight. Night means obscenities under a freeway. Without complaint, night is our last far out trip. Companionless, her hands press upon the black hole jukebox. Thank you.
Carlos Angela Peña Redondo. Another hand for all the cool poets. And for Don, who turned in some of his poems and who talked about the antique shop and time. A hand for Don. And a hand for Heather, who also turned in a poem about her daughter and about beauty. Another big hand for, for Heather once again. And a hand for Julianne, who remembered her grandfather. Yeah. And for Senor Dedic, the one and only Terry poet here. <laughs> <laughs> All daring, all beautiful. Amy, were you also Amy and Kate and Vicky, and like we said, Marisa. Make sure everybody, we got everybody right here. And Katie over here, and John over here, and Gail with her fabulous Pachuco hairdo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyone else with a little yellow paper? Anyone else with some more lines? You all have a beautiful voice. I'm going to turn this over right over to Katie and John and Gail. Okay, so we're, since we're making the video, we have to do a, a sign out now. Thanks everyone for coming. Isn't this a great space to do it? Right by the Gandhi statue, by the California building with the California State Poet Laureate, Juan Felipe Herrera, and with the Atlantia Literary Director Katie Porter and the Atlantia Literary Laureate Gail Brandeis. For the Press Enterprise and PE.com, I'm Metro Editor John Bender. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.